Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zadai with you and welcome to The Secret Place where there's always a prophetic flow. And on this program, we're gonna be talking about the power and the outflow of the Spirit in every area of your life, like healing, even prosperity, even deliverance. God wants to talk to you. He wants to move in you. He wants to drive out fear. He wants to drive out anything that's hindering you from walking with Him. And in this program, we're gonna be talking about where you stand right now in this generation this is an exciting time that we live in. I was sent back knowing that we were going to be one of the few generations left. If not the last, we were going to be one of the last. There was not much time left. Jesus told me that. He said, there's not a lot of time left. He said, it's time is short. He said, I'm preparing to come back for my bride. But Jesus did not know exactly when he was coming back, but he told me there was a great harvest coming in. So just so you know, all these programs are geared toward getting you into place so that your destiny can be established and that you can start to work in the harvest field and God is going to display His power through you. In the scripture that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how God's power in these last days is going to be demonstrated and, and exactly what it is that I do every day getting ready for that. I'm going, to, I'm going to share some secrets with you about prayer and how to get ready for the move of God because the destiny that's in you is going to come out and we're all can enjoy what God has for us in these last days. This scripture I want to read to you is in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and I'm going to start reading with verse 5 and this is in the Amplified. Uh, version of the Bible. It says, who are being guarded or garrisoned by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit the final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. And continuing with verse 6, it says, you should be exceedingly glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations. But in verse 7 it says this, so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested, your faith which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to redound to your praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, is revealed. Okay, so this scripture Peter is talking about the fact that even though you're going through things, that there is a purpose and a plan that God has, and that even though you're being tested, that you're actually being purified as well. And so I saw that right now in the body of Christ, that a lot of people are going through things, but Jesus said, tell the people just to keep going through. Don't stop. Don't hesitate, because what's going on inside of you is being a purifying process. So the Spirit of God wants to heat up the inside of you through the fire from the, from the altar of God. That fire is a purifying fire. And so it burns up all the chaff and, the, and, the, and everything that's not going to be of any value in heaven. You see, I saw that we want to submit to the holy fire. We want the fire to go ahead and burn out everything that's not of God right now. Jesus told me, he said that we should submit to God, that we should fall upon the rock, lest the rock fall on you. He said, judge yourself now, lest you be judged. In other words, we're supposed to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, as the scripture says. So these are all things that we actively do. So God doesn't humble us, we humble ourselves. We are not judged if we judge ourselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I submit to the Holy Fire because I know in that testing, in that purifying process, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna be unhindered by anything of the flesh. God is going to purify His body in these days. So the things that you're going through, it's just an opportunity to encounter the supernatural. I sense the Spirit of God strongly when I'm my weakest, because Paul even said that. And uh, I've encountered this weakness because that's when the power of God is displayed. So really, I'm not distressed when I feel weak because I know that the strength of God is coming in. So whatever you're going through right now, you have to, you have to uh, understand that God is purifying you and that the pressures you feel, you're going to win against that. You're not going to give in. God has sent 
into this generation a word of deliverance, a word of encouragement to, to the body of Christ that we are being prepared for God's glory. So we have to encounter the fire. We have to encounter humility because we submit ourselves to God. We have to encounter these things now so that we are not judged in the future because the glory when it comes, he, the Father is, is going to walk amongst us in this last days. And the glory is so powerful that if you're not ready for it, things could happen that uh, you're not ready for. But if your body is already submitted to God, if you are a living sacrifice, as Paul talked about, pl placing your body on the altar as a living sacrifice, which is your, your reasonable service, you're, you're holy and acceptable unto God. You see, the fire wants to be your friend. The fire to me, the holy fire is my friend because it helps me to put the flesh under. It helps me to purify my thoughts and my, my ways. I learn the pathways of God. When I was in heaven, there was sapphire stone on the floor of heaven in the throne room, and there were white flames coming from it, and there was white flames going through it. It was so holy, and I remember how I had sensed that at times on the earth in different waves of the Spirit, but it wasn't prevalent in my life. But now that I've encountered that, I know when it comes on the earth, I know when it comes in my body, I know when I experience that, and I yield to it because I know that God is wanting to purify me. When God breathes on you, His breath brings life to you. If He doesn't breathe on you, you don't sense that, but the Spirit of God is breathing on us now. He's preparing us so that we can move into this. So once we've been tested, it proves the genuineness of our faith. So what's happening is God is revealing what's really in you. And you want to know. You want to know that what is in you is the right thing. So this process you go through is you submit to what is happening in your life. You submit to the fact that God is in control of your life. He is the author and the finisher of your faith and that you're being proven, your, your, your character is being tried, but it's gonna be purified, and you're gonna come out passing all your tests. God is gonna prosper you, He's gonna heal you, He's going to deliver you, He's going to give you wisdom, He's gonna lead you in every way. God wants to prosper you, He wants to help you, but He wants you delivered as well and healed as well, and He wants you to have the right friends, the right relationships. In this day, we have to count the cost and separate ourselves from the world. God never asked us to be friends with the world. Paul said, come out from among them and be separate. See, we're holy. We're holy because God has bought us at a price. He has bought us for His own possession. So we're not our own anymore. God owns us. And it's His desire that we be put on display so that He can show the nations that He's our God. And so being holy is ownership. God owns us and He displays us and He says, this is my people, these are my servants, these are my family, the children. And Jesus even said this, He said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. God's children on the earth inherit the earth. God's children on the earth inherit all the benefits that Jesus claimed and got through the sacrifice that He accomplished on the cross. Okay, so the blood of Jesus right now is speaking on your behalf in heaven, but you're on the earth. But see, you're just as righteous as if you never sinned because God's blood, the God's blood through Jesus Christ is on the mercy seat. So God the Father looks down and He sees that blood and you are completely righteous in His sight. And because you've come out and stood out among the people because God bought you, you're as holy as you're going to get. God has made you holy through the blood and also the fact that you actively stand out from among the world and want to be separate. Okay, so this is the process that I go through every day. I acknowledge the fact that God bought me and that I am no longer my own and that I'm of value because God bought me with His Son. And so I come out 
of every day, I've come out of every day after I've lived my life for that day in the best that I can do. When I lay my head on, on the bed, I know I have done everything that I can do because all day long I am actively thinking about Him and knowing that I have been purchased at a price and that my body's not my own. So that's what you need to do. You need to always acknowledge that you've been bought with a price. And right here, if, you, if you've been bought with a price and you're having temptations and trials, it's not because God's mad at you, it's because He's just purifying you. You're coming forth and you're passing all your tests. And so at the end of this, in verse 8, of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, it says this, Without having seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not even now see Him, you believe in Him and exalt and thrill with inexpressible and glorious triumphant heavenly joy. And verse 9 says, At the same time you receive the result or outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And here's what I wanted to talk about for the remaining of this program is this word for soul is the word psyche. It's not the word spirit, which, which is your born again part of you. The inner man, the heart of you is your spirit. But Paul here, excuse me, Peter here is saying that your soul can be saved, which is your mind, will, and your emotions. But see, that is through a process in this life. Now, Paul mentioned that we have to renew our minds through the Word of God. There's a transformation that happens. And so that's what God wants in these last days for His people. There has to come this place where we are transformed because we are renewed in our minds. And our souls actually side with our spirit. So there is a salvation of our soul that has to do with the renewing of the mind, it's a transformation that happens because we get our mind educated with the Word of God and the ways of God. So in this last day, all the body of Christ through the fivefold ministry of the church and through the discipleship and the training and, and teaching, God has given us so much of His Word and the revelation of His Word in these last days. But it's time for transformation. I'm not really waiting for, uh, you know, a, a revival or even the move of God. You know, I believe in moves of God, but if you're alive, you don't need revived. I, I just think that some of these uh, words that we use are, are not really representing what God wants to do. God wants transformation. He doesn't even want reformation anymore. He wants transformation. In other words, He wants you to be changed permanently to the place where your soul is in line with your spirit and you think as though you are in your heart and there's no conflict. Paul talked about people that actually oppose themselves within themselves. They actually have an argument going on. But see, this should not be the case. We shouldn't be divided. We should be all in the same plan and purpose of God throughout our mind as well as our spirit. And then we should tell our body, this is what we're gonna do. But see, because of warfare, like we've talked about in previous programs, we have, to, we have to fight for what we believe because Satan tries to come in and confuse us. But see, right here, Peter's talking about the fact that we can overcome all these things by the transformation of our mind and also by the fact that we're purified through the fire. So we're purified through trial. And and don't think that this is something strange or just be, just you going through it. There are people all over the world that are going through this. It's all believers are being tested. They're being placed in situations where they're being strengthened and purified. So don't doubt that you're you know that you're just the only one because God is disciplining those He loves, and, and things like this happen because we're going to excel in character and we're going to be trusted by God in these last days. So I, this is what I saw. I saw in the last days that people were going to learn how to walk in the spirit in such a way that their faces were going to start to glow. I saw uh, all the faces of the, the sons and daughters of God in the last day. Um, there was a countenance change and I saw it was because of the communion that they had with God in the secret place, that there was this 
meeting with God that was happening, and, and it was mostly, to tell you the truth, at first it was happening at night. So at the end of, of the age here, as we get into this final uh, move of God where there's transformation, what's going to happen is, is while people are sleeping, they're going to be visited, and, and God's going to visit them through dreams and visions, and angels are going to come and stand by their bed. This is going to happen all over the world. All believers are going to start to be influenced by the other realm. What will happen is when they wake up, their countenance will be different. And what I saw was as people start walking it out during the day, that people started noticing that there, were, there was a certain countenance change in the believers, in the people of God, that they they had joy and they had an overcoming faith. And this was because of the influence of the other realm. And then I saw that after a while, through teaching and through engaging God and being in in services where the power of God was so strong and the glory was coming in, just like Moses, there was that transformation on their face. And people saw that they were different. And I saw at the end of the age that people uh, in the body of Christ, the believers, all of us, were walking in victory. I saw that everyone in the world wanted to be like us. That there was those, of course, that hate God, and because of that, they're going to be against you. But I saw so many people coming in. Can you imagine that, that, that one billion souls could come in in just a few years? That's one-seventh of the earth. But I'm believing for one-seventh of the earth. I'm believing for one billion souls personally to come in and I believe that God can use me to influence that many people. How about you? What do you think that God has for you? And, and don't think it's something small because you were chosen at the end of the age to encounter this glory. This isn't really about your ability. This is about the fact that you've submitted to God and He's put you through the fire and you pass your test. Are you ready to pass your test? Because I know I am. Well, what if God tells you to do something that you can't do? Well, see, your next step after that is a supernatural step. See, God is giving you opportunity to enter into the supernatural. It is not in your ability. It's in your inability. Remember what I talked to you about, about Paul. He gloried in his weakness. He said, because when I'm weak, I'm strong. Because the glory of God, the power of God is revealed in weakness. And so you can understand, all of us give up the opportunity to have a supernatural event when we try to wiggle out of an impossible situation instead of submitting to God, praying in the Spirit, and just offering ourselves up to God and saying, Lord, I can't go any further unless you intervene. Well, at that very moment, you're going to get angelic help, and the Spirit of God is going to rise up in victory inside of you, and you're going to pass your test because in this last day, the faces of the wise ones are going to ignite. They're going to be illuminated. Moses, when he came down from the mountain, he didn't even know that his face had changed. Um, the people actually asked him to cover his face because they couldn't look upon him. Well, what happens if you, like Moses, start spending time in his presence and it turns into glory, like Moses encountered? What happens if you start getting visited at night by the angels of the Lord and by dreams and visions, and then during the day you just start to yield to that. What if all the body of Christ starts to rise up and, and have a smile on our face, have a, 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 the spirit of, of overcoming power? Remember that Peter would walk down the street and his shadow touched people and they were healed. Peter was one who was always rebuked for for doubt and unbelief. He was always saying stuff that he wasn't supposed to say. And we just read this amazing thing that Peter said. It says here that the genuineness of our faith is, is, is infinitely more precious than gold because he went through trials and temptations too. So he wasn't immune. You know what he went through, and he made it so you can make it too. So the Spirit is saying right now that you are to rise up to the occasion, that you don't discern it maybe right now, but when you get to heaven, you're going to see that you had the biggest opportunity, that you were chosen to live at this time to participate in the greatest move of God, which is a transformation of everything that we've ever known. It's a transformation above that. It's permanent change. 
That's what I'm talking about here. It's no longer just breakthrough because you'll need another breakthrough. You, you're going to get to the place where the transformation is, is permanent and you don't need another hit of the Spirit. In other words, you're like, everybody wants to get a touch from God and, and everybody wants to get a word from God all the time. What happens when you get, to, you get through and you're in breakthrough, but then you go to overthrow and you walk in dominion? Well, that's what I saw at the end of the age where you don't need another word because you've got plenty of word. You don't need another touch of God because you haven't left the touch of God. I'm telling you the truth. I experienced this overthrow, and I'm telling you that this is what I do every day. I exercise in my spirit overthrow. I see myself as ruling and reigning with Christ. I see myself just like I would be in heaven. I see myself now. I'm telling you the truth. You can walk in this overcoming power right now. The move of God that, that's coming upon the earth and is already occurring, and it's just going to keep increasing. That power, that move of God, is going to affect everyone around you. So it's, it's time for you to jump in. So what is it that's stopping you right now? It, it better not be fear of failure because God has already gone to your future and established your pathway, according to Psalms 139.5. And We've already read in Romans chapter 8 at the end that we're more than conquerors and nothing can insert itself between you and God. Now, that is the truth. Okay, so if God is taking off the limitations and nothing can come between you and that you're more than a conqueror, then what has to happen next is your mind has to switch over into overthrow. And I'm telling you by the power of God right now, you can lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. You don't stop laying hands on the sick just because someone doesn't get healed. God tells you to lay hands on the sick and he's going to recover them. You command people to come back from the dead and he's going to raise them from the dead. If it doesn't work once, that doesn't mean that you, that you need to stop. You just keep laying hands on the sick. He is the one that heals. Okay, it's the same with the devil. You tell him to leave and you refuse to take anything else. You don't let him talk back to you. But if he doesn't leave, you don't give up. You just come at him again and you tell him, you enforce the victory. You tell him, I am a child of God and I come in the name of Jesus and I am against you and I cast you out. You tell him that you are going to drive him out. I'm telling you, I have seen demons just start to shake. They don't know how to handle a person that's a believer that knows his rights, his or her rights in Christ. So this is what I do every day. I exercise inside myself as though I'm in the next dispensation that I'm already gone to heaven. I walk on the earth as though I'm already in the next age. I do that now. I saw that that's the way it'll be at the end of the age. Just like Enoch, he walked with God and then he just disappeared. But I'm telling you, those days before he disappeared, he was going back and forth. He was encountering the next age before he passed over. And the Lord told me to release that into this generation. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release this dominion. I just release this revelation right now. In the name of Jesus, just touch all your people. In the name of Jesus. Hey, thanks for joining me. See you next time.